we can't do that. We can't exchange the truth of God for what we think. My allegiance is not to this. My allegiance is to the kingdom of heaven. Guys, the Bible says all that is in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but of this world. And the world passes away, y'all. So this is what Jesus is saying, man. We have to love him over our skin color. We have to love him over our personal safety. And if we lose our life for his sake, we will find it. If we try to cling to our life here, we will lose it. And that's what I want you black Christians to understand right now. But if you are voting, I would say choose this day who you're gonna serve. But I would say don't support what the Democrats represent right now. What's up guys, my name's Mason and I'm the Transparent Filmmaker. Join me as I share past projects and give you tips you can use in the film industry. We're doing film and life together. My passion is to help others create and inspire their creativity. So expect to be challenged and encouraged on my channel. It's the Transparent Filmmaker. Let's go. Welcome to Transparent Filmmaker YouTube. Um, this was going to be a little bit different probably very controversial in this segment we're gonna be talking about a little bit of po politics a little bit of faith so um i hope you enjoy it and uh yeah, let's get into this <laughs> right now is an interesting time first of all to be christian second of all to be black right now because we got a lot of stuff that's going on with the whole black lives matter the elections trump like all this craziness that's happening um, in the world today has really got everybody on edge. And COVID, you know, you got that going on too, which has definitely changed all of our lives. So today I'm gonna talk about some issues why as being a black Christian is interesting because, because as, a, as a Christian, our primary authority is the Bible. So whatever the Bible, whatever the Bible says, that's what we have to stand on uh, no matter what no matter if it uh, comes up against our, our thought processes or anything. So we're going to talk about those things that the Bible says and how, from my perspective, I think we as Christians should relate those to our lives, um, especially right now. And so everything that I say here is not saying that I'm perfect as a Christian. It's not saying that Christians in general are perfect. But what, I'm, but what I am saying is that God has a standard that he will uphold uh, despite our downfalls. So that means we can think what we want, but God's mind doesn't change. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So let's keep that in mind as we go forward. Here is Joshua 24. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and, and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond Egypt and in uh, the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the God of your fathers in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the land that you dwell. And this is Joshua saying, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Y'all know that scripture. This right here is why I think this is very interesting time for black Christians, because at this point we have to choose whom we will serve. Will we serve ourselves and our personal safety or will we serve God and his standard of morality? Um, in the world. So my purpose for this video is to encourage you as a Christian to follow God's word and not serve the creature rather than the creator, which is us. So let's not look at ourselves, not look, not, let's not look at our personal safety. Let's let, let's have faith in God that he can protect us, that he can keep us. And then everything else comes after that. But last thing is we can't align ourselves with evil things. So if we're and I'll just be clear, if we're voting Democratic, we're voting against a lot of things that God says is right. So that's why we're going to go over those things that I talked about earlier. All right, let's do it. OK, so here are the things we're going to talk about real quick. So first, we're going to talk about innocent life. That includes abortion. Then we're going to talk about uh, gay marriage. Then we're going to talk about Israel and just some other thoughts that I have personally and so as I'm saying all this stuff, I also don't want y'all to think that I'm insensitive to uh, the hurtful things that, that Trump has said, because I know that's a lot of the uproar right now, Trump and the things that he says. So I'm not I'm not completely ignorant of, OK, he said some really dumb things and it is a tough hurricane. 
one of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. E, see what I'm saying? So I know the guy has said some done stuff. So that's why, you know, when I say this, I'm not saying, hey, we should necessarily, hey, go support Trump because he's an amazing person and man of God. I'm not, I'm not saying that. It's absolutely not what I'm saying. But we do have an obligation to support the things of God, in my opinion. Let's get in. Let's get into the first topic: abortion. I'll go over each uh, person's platform, and then I'm gonna talk about as a Christian why this should be important to us on abortion. Here we'll go with Republicans first. It says they will appoint judges who support the sanctity of life at all stages, oppose the use of public funds funds to perform or promote abortions or subsidized health care that includes abortion services. Okay, and here's the Democrats. They will appoint ju judges who will protect women's rights and legal abortion. Uh, will continue to uh, battle Republican efforts to defund Planned Parenthood. So, as black people, we already know about Planned Parenthood. So, uh, yeah, I ain't even gonna get into Margaret Sanger. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. No. I believe that there should be no more babies. No. See this award. Uh, I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Oh my God! So I've been talking to some of my friends who lean more democratic, and so when I say abortion, they're like, "Okay, well, what about this innocent life?" Well, that's where I, I totally agree with them when they say that because abortion is never mentioned in the Bible. However, murder is, and so. But let's see what the Bible has to say about innocent life. I'm not going to talk about abortion here, per se. I'm going to talk about innocent life so that this will cover innocent black men on the street. And it will also cover innocent babies in the womb. Let's go to Proverbs 6 real quick. Proverbs 6, uh, I think it's starting at 16. And it says, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. First thing, halty eyes. Um, when I looked that up, that means like looking more highly than yourself than you ought to. Okay. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord amongst brothers. Okay. So you see right there, it was like the fourth thing. God said the shedding of innocent blood is something that he hates. So whether this is the innocent black man on the street or whether this is the baby in the wound, God hates the innocent blood being shed. Rightly Good evening, President Trump making remarks now in the Rose Garden. By the brutal death of George Floyd. My administration is fully committed that for George and his family, justice will be served. He will not have died in vain. The destruction of innocent life and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. Now, um, I would go as far as to say the most innocent blood that can be shed is a baby who has not even, who has been conceived and who's not even exited the womb yet. They are the most innocent of beings that ever exist and that ever will exist. As a Christian, you see right here, God says, and it's the shedding of innocent blood is something that he, ha that he hates. And now, if you want to debate like, oh, well, life hadn't even started yet. Well, here, here's what God said in Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, before you were born, uh, you were set apart and I appointed you a prophet to the nation. So he was specifically talking to Jeremiah there. However, we can pull out a concept that before we were in, before our parents, our mother was even impregnated with us, God had already formed us and he knew us. So I would say life starts before conception at that point because of what the Bible says. So God already knew that you were going to be conceived in the mama's belly. He already had your spirit. He already molded you and made you exactly who you are today. But the main, but the main thing for that is thou shalt not murder. Y'all know the Ten Commandments. What I don't want people to get confused. Here's the other thing real quick with the Democratic Party. They say we, should, we support women's choice. And so that they, they put uh, abortion under the umbrella of women's choice. <sighs> well, if that's the case, then I should have the choice to murder anybody that I'm angry at for whatever reason. Let's be consistent across the board. If you want to allow the murder 
of, of, of people as a choice, then let's let's make it legal for everyone to let's just call a purge, my dude. Like, come on. So women, it is, you can't say we have a choice to murder. Um, again, not ignoring the hard, the hard circumstances that some women have to endure or the hard choices that come from having a child, but there are other ways to handle it besides killing your innocent child. So the second issue as a Christian that is that is pretty widespread is uh, gay marriage. So yeah, so this is also going to be one. This is a, all these things are like hot topics, and when you talk about them, people really get riled up. So I guess get ready to get wild, wild up. Okay, so. With the whole gay marriage thing, you know, uh, the 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 um, Republicans say this is the part of their platform, in which I will have links in the description of everybody's platform. You can go download it and read the important issues to you yourself. Okay, so the foundation of society is family, the union between one man and one woman, um, and uh, and it says uh, same-sex marriage is accepted and embraced. LGBT uh, rights will be defended and championed. It says that and championed. So we're going to put the rights of people to be man with a man and woman with a woman. We're going to champion those rights. Well, as a Christian, you can't support that. And here's why. Let's go to Romans 1. Okay. This is the Bible, y'all. This is not me saying this is the Bible. And as a Christian, if you're a Christian, right? Your authority is the Bible, right? Right. Okay. So it says, this is Romans 126. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged the natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up uh, natural relations with women and were consumed with passion one for another. Men committing shameless acts with men, receiving in themselves the due penalty for their era okay now let me let me also say this about homosexuality homosexuality is not a greater sin than any other sin I mean if you look at the things that uh, God said he hates homosexuality wasn't even in there right so a lot of people a lot of Christians they like to say oh well you're gay you know you're this so you're going to hell and all this well <laughs> hey sir if you're a liar you were going to hell right uh, if you are unrepentant in any sin, you know, you will not be with the Father in heaven. You will not have everlasting peace and joy uh, uh, with Jesus. Oh, they having fun. And the end that, uh, that, is, that is talked about in Revelations. And Jesus says in John 14 that where I go, I will, he wants us to be where he is. And where he is, he is building mansions for us. And he said, if I did not have a, if I was not preparing a place for you, I would not I would not tell you that I am and I would not have come for you. So let's remember that God has a place for us. Homosexuality is not a greater sin than any other sin that we commit, like fornication, uh, a man with a woman or anything like that. Okay. We'll do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens from the violence and depression of a hateful foreign ideology. Believe me. And I have to say, as a Republican, it is so nice to hear you cheering for what I just said. Thank you. Let's talk about same-sex marriage. You said a few years ago that you were evolving on that yeah, issue. I, I, Where yeah, are you? I'm traditional marriage. It is changing rapidly. But what do you say to a, a, a lesbian who's married or a gay man who's married who says, Donald Trump, what's traditional about being married three times? Well, I, I, they have a very good point. But, you know, I've been a very hardworking person. I've had, actually, I have a great marriage. I have a great wife now. And I, the, the, my two wives were very good. And I don't blame them, but I was, I was working maybe like you. 22 hours a day. I'm not asking you to explain your no, divorces, I know. but... No, but... I'm just saying it was... I blame myself because my business was so powerful for me. 
I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But what do you say to a, 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 a lesbian or a gay man who are married and say... I, I really don't say anything. I mean, I'm okay. just, I'm just, Jake, I'm for traditional marriage. Israel. <coughs> so, um, I know a little bit about like the two-state solutions that each one of them are trying to figure out. And uh, um, so uh, it's not like the Democrats say like, oh, we have no support for Israel. They support them. But when you look at the reading in their documents, uh, Republicans definitely uh, are champion Israel. So you know, I'm going to read a little bit of that. Here's what the Republicans have to say about Israel. Our unequivocal support for Israel. Like the United States, the modern, United, uh, the modern state of Israel is a country born from their aspired aspiration for freedom and stand out amongst the nations as a beacon of democracy and humanity. Beyond our mutual uh, uh, strategic interest, Israel is uh, likewise an exceptional country that shares our most essential values. It, it, uh, it is the only country in the Middle East where freedom of speech and freedom of religion are found. Therefore, support for Israel is an expression of Americanism, and it is the responsibility of our government to advance policies that reflect America's strong desire for a relationship with no, with no, um, with no daylight between American and Israel. That's a pretty tight bond. He said, "No daylight." Okay, we recognize Jerusalem as an eternal and individual, ind indivisible capital of the Jewish state, and call the American embassy to be moved there for fulfillment of U.S. law. Okay, so that's what, uh, that's what the Republicans say to, the, uh, to Israel. So, and here's what the Democrats say about Israel. Uh, a strong Israel state is vital to the United States. We will always support Israel's right to defend itself, including by retaining the equivocal military edge and uh, oppose any efforts to delegitimize Israel, including the United Nations, or through the boycott devisement uh, and the sanctions movement. We will continue uh, to work toward a two-state solution of Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, while Jerusalem is a mantle for final statute negotiation, it remains the capital of Israel and under uh, an undivided city. So, so Democrats they actually have support, some support for Israel, but. Um, uh, under the current administration, you you see Netanyahu, Net, Net, whatever, however you say his name, he has expressed that uh, Trump's administration has been the most supportive. President, and I've known his family and his team for a long time, and there is no greater supporter of the Jewish people and the Jewish state than President Donald Trump. I think we should put that to rest. And, and, this, and this is also what I don't want to happen. Sometimes as, as black people, we want to make up all these excuses of why we shouldn't follow the Bible, why we shouldn't do this. You know, if you, if you call yourself a Christian, the Bible is your authority, whether you're black or white. And secondly, realize that if you can't trust God to give you a solid word to live by, you can't trust him with your salvation in eternity after you die. So you might as well not even follow God. You might as well just go be cold. You know, God said, I'd rather you be cold or hot. You know, if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out. So trust his word, okay? Live by it, you know? Those, those, that's the only choice you have. You can't be in the middle. You know, you're thinking of whooping, right? <laughs> well, what I do? You're bringing these nasty girls to my house. Mom, so I won't do it no more. You know, if you have uh, someone in your family or your, your mom or your dad or whatever, you know when they say something, they mean it, right? And you kind of have a healthy fear of them saying like, yo, Look, mama said I shouldn't do that or, you know what I'm saying, so I'm just not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's a healthy fear. And I think we have to have that same fear toward God when it comes to obeying his word. So, like, God, you know, maybe I don't understand this, but this is what you said. And I don't necessarily even agree with it, but this is what you said, so I'm going to submit to it. And that's what we have to do. We have to submit to Christ no matter what our opinion is or what we think is right or smart or whatever. So, um so this, but this is what God does when people, when people don't do that. It says, therefore God gave them up to their, to the lust of their hearts, uh, and to impurity, to the dishonor, to dishonoring their bodies amongst themselves. Um, uh, uh, because they exchanged the truth of God for lies and worshiped and served the creature rather than creator who is blessed forever. So we can't do that. We can't exchange the truth of God for what we think and serve a creature 
We, we are creatures. We are created by God. We can't serve ourselves in what we think over, over what he says. For the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought to captivity and, and obedience to Christ. So we have to take the thoughts that we have. So, oh, I don't think I don't think uh, murder, murder is wrong or innocent, killing innocent life is wrong on both ends. I think I think it's OK over here, but not OK over here. That's a lofty opinion. Oh, I think that we should give people the 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 option to, uh, you know, love who love who they want to love and do this. But God says it's wrong. That's a lofty opinion. Oh, I think I think we don't we shouldn't have to support Israel or we shouldn't, you know, support uh, uh, true justice. That's a lofty opinion, you know. And so all the so we have to make sure that we're not uh, raising up these high thoughts and putting them above God in our life. Um, and so that's where it comes to. We have to die to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We have to die to ourselves daily. Luke 9:23 says, if anyone, if anyone would come after me, so if we would say we're following Christ, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. That's, an inter that's interesting, really. That's really interesting right now. I actually didn't even thought about this. We're all, all those black people. We're trying to save our life. We're trying to, oh, no police brutality. Keep us safe. Keep our kids safe. For whoever would save his life will lose it. That's an interesting thought. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and loses and uh, and loses or forfeits himself? In some other verses it says his soul. For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words... Of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory. So when you die, you're standing before God. God will deny you entrance with him because you denied him on earth. and You denied his word. So daily, guys, we have to deny our lofty opinions and our lofty thoughts and, and uh, cast them down to the obedience of Christ. And we can only do that through reading his word, through prayer. Um, where we have to, we have to continually rip out, rip, we have to like rip out our flesh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a hard process, y'all, like, like not, not one doing what you want to do. It's a tough process, but we got to continually rip off this flesh or our minds and everything. We have to submit to God fully. Um, and I know it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do, but it's required of us and it's required of us to see God one day. Now, the last thing I'll say about policies is this whole uh, is free speech and gun control. Uh, I mean, under the last Democratic president, you know, Obama, um, it got weird. <laughs> like you couldn't say certain things. Um, you know, I don't think they I don't th I think they got a little bit of gun control stuff in place. I don't remember. But man, it got weird. Like you couldn't say certain stuff. They were almost were about to tell businesses to, um, you know, put a third bathroom in there for, uh, you know, the transgender uh, uh, folks and, and things like that, and it's like, ooh, this is this is getting awkward. What happened to my free speech and being able to say what I wanted to say? Um, we have to respect each other, y'all. Period. I'm not saying we can disrespect each other. I'm not saying that we gotta respect each other. That's a part of loving one another. But this is America. If somebody wants to be a racist be a racist okay but respect me you know what i'm saying that's your opinion you know what i mean just don't come around me we don't have to talk we don't have to conversate but this is america you have the freedom to be a racist you have the freedom to be pro-black you have freedom to be pro-white you have freedom to be pro-gun you have freedom to be anti anti whatever that's this is america you have the freedom to do that you also have the freedom to to sin you know what i'm saying we have all the freedoms, okay? But as Christians, what we can't do is use our freedom as an opportunity to sin. And then, and then people will say like, well, isn't that what Jesus, Jesus came, you know, isn't he, he supposed to be peaceful? Let's see what Jesus has to say about that. 
Let's see what Jesus has to say about what Jesus came for. If we're talking about, oh, there's just supposed to be peace and harmony and all this stuff and all this and all that. Okay, let's see what Jesus had to say about peace and why he came. This whole chapter is good. Y'all should go read Matthew chapter 10. But here it says, Everyone who acknowledges me public, publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Then he says, this is the kicker. And you're like, Jesus said this? Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to earth. I came not to bring peace but a sword i have come to i have come to set a man against his father a daughter against her mother a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law your enemies will be those of your own household now wow i bet y'all looking like jesus didn't say that matthew 10:34. that's where it starts read it okay so we are not here just to be peacemakers only Look, and this is why he says that. It's not saying that we should cause havoc and be rude to people. That's not, that's not what this is saying. It says, if you love your mother or your, your father or your mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, Y'all, that's if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Wow. So he says, if you cling to this life, you guys, the Bible says all that is in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It is not of the father, but of this world and the world passes away, y'all. So this is what Jesus is saying, man. We have to love him over our skin color. We have to love him over our personal safety. And if we lose our life for his sake, we will find it. If we try to cling to our life here, we will lose it. And that's what I want you black Christians to understand right now. Okay. So I'm saying I'm not even voting. But if you are voting, I would say choose this day who you're going to serve. And if your conscience says I can't vote for Trump, then just don't vote. You are free in Christ. To not vote but I would say don't support what the Democrats represent right now we are all sinners we have all fallen short of the glory of God especially me but we can be forgiven through Jesus if we die to ourselves pick up our cars daily confess and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and accept him into our heart and live a life that satisfies him then we will be saved and we will see him one day and we can have peace and joy in our mind and contentment despite anything that we're going through in life. So if you don't know Jesus, that's what I would encourage you to do today. Confess and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, pray a prayer and say, God, I believe that you are the, that you are the son of God, that you died and rose again for my sins. I accept you into my life and I ask that your Holy Spirit would come and lead me in a life of sanctification. So. There we go, y'all. Man, the video came out way longer than uh, I thought it was supposed to. I really wanted it to be about like 15, max 20. Pretty sure this is going to come out to 30. Uh, but man, y'all, this is some crazy times we in, man. And, you know, as a black, as a black person, you really don't want to be saying this stuff because you're going to get called Uncle Tom and whatever else that black people can call you. But look, man, <laughs> I'm an ambassador here, bro. And I'm a, I'm a soldier in the Lord's army, so whatever smoke you want to bring, bring it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying, call me what you want to call me, but understand that my allegiance is not to this black skin, okay? My allegiance is to the kingdom of heaven, period, all right? So take that how you want to take it. I love you, man. And so maybe I'll be back doing, like, some film stuff. I don't know. I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes. 
but uh you know this is the only th this is the only thing that was on my heart to actually like put out so you know what i'm saying take it or leave it much love y'all peace it's the transparent filmmaker let's go